In my recent video where I talked about using Basecamp to manage my care plan clients, I got a couple of requests to show you why I like Basecamp so much. So in this video, we're going to take a look at why I've preferred and used Basecamp and loved it for many years, specifically for my web design projects and for a lot of my other side projects as well. I've gone ahead and set up this little demo project here to show you some of my favorite features. And really at its core, Basecamp is similar to a lot of other systems, but I think some of the things that set it apart from all the other ones that I used and tried many years prior will be the things I'm gonna focus on in this video. So number one and very top of the list is when you're working with clients, Basecamp just absolutely excels in that. And that is probably the most compelling reason why I've stuck with it all these years. So you can see here that I have a couple of examples. So I have these two people, which one is me, one is just a, a demo person that I put on this project, and then me as the client here. So what that means is that in a variety of different portions of this project, I can determine what that person sees and what they don't see. Now, the reason why I think this functionality excels is because of the way that it operates. So you can see that I have this person invited and it says client under there. So I went ahead and added them to this project. And on their side, they're gonna get a simple email here. And the beauty of this is that the client doesn't even have to ever join Basecamp. Like they could delete this email we're looking at right here, never log into Basecamp and still function within you know, the scope of our account because they can simply reply to every email they get from Basecamp and it dumps it right back into the place that it originated. So let me show you what I mean. Like for instance, I've not accepted that invite, but I have this little message board thread here. I have a draft and I'm gonna say continue editing. I've typed up my message. I've said that I wanted the client and my team member to be notified when I publish this. So when I post it, I can go back to my client email real quick. And then just as simply as that, you can see the exact message that I posted inside of Basecamp comes to their email address. And then it just tells the client here at the bottom, you can either reply directly to this email or respond in Basecamp. And when I click that link, it's gonna take me back to the thread that I just posted. So however the client wants to operate, they can do that. Now it's interesting because I find about a 50-50 split between people that get into Basecamp and people that don't. And really it's not a matter of technical complexity. Some people who you would think are not technical in that sense at all are actually inside the project and operating. And that may be a little bit scary, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Nobody in all of my years, knock on wood, has actually messed up anything inside of the project. So that's probably the biggest portion of the client management feature, but there are more uh, kind of nuances to it. So of course, like I said, they don't have to even accept the invite or ever log into Basecamp. So from their side, it's as simple as me telling them in the onboarding phase, you're gonna get an invite, ignore it if you want to, but that's how we're gonna communicate. I just tell my clients to reply to any email they get from us and we're gonna get it one way or the other. So that's just one message board thread. And in terms of you know my workflow inside of my agency, we typically are doing message board threads when we're communicating with clients as though they're emails. And we're gonna start a new message board thread when the context of the conversation changes. So that's how we keep things really clean. And before I jump into my second point, which is tied into what I just said, I wanna show you a little bit more inside of the to-dos area here. So you can see that these little markers say the client can see this. So this means that all of these to-dos, they can see any comments or notes that are added to them, they can see any deadlines that are assigned, of course they can see. However, we can also keep an internal uh, to-do list or as many as you want, could be one, could be 10. And these could all be things that the client doesn't need to see. So for our side, we gotta make sure the contract is signed and payment is received before we can move on and start in the project. But at the same time, if you know in phase one, the onboarding form is a requirement, then we can actually assign that directly to our client. I would just type their name in, so it's this green version of me. And then what it's gonna do is send them an email to notify them and it has a, we can assign a due date to it. And that will give the client a reminder the day before, the day of, and it will remind them after if it's late. So if there are time sensitive things, which often there are in these sorts of projects, then it makes sense to go ahead and save this like that. So you can see that there's a lot of flexibility in how you operate with your clients. Another thing that's really helpful is we also have this scheduling functionality. And so this automatically created this schedule entry item here because of the fact that I added a date to that to-do item. So that's gonna put it in this calendar. And then you can also sync this directly to your Google Calendar, which I've done. So my Google Calendar has all of my events here 
from my entire Basecamp account through one feed. So you can either subscribe to one specific calendar in a project or to your entire account if you wanna go that route. So for me, that's extremely helpful, especially when we're juggling a few different projects at a time. So there's a lot more that we could go into with the client management side, but you can see that it's really powerful the next thing that I love about Basecamp is kind of tied into what we talked about a little bit ago, and that is the fact that Basecamp is fairly flexible and doesn't lock you into a specific workflow. So you can see that this project is essentially a demo, but I've set up a few different items here with a message board and a to-do list with a couple of different sections, and then some of these even have groups inside of them. So whatever your workflow is, if you prefer to do kind of the quasi email sort of thing or through to-do lists, you can do the live chat functionality. That is perhaps a downside to some people, but it's also a benefit to others. You do have to think a little bit creatively, but that being my second favorite feature, the flexibility is open-ended because you can essentially set these things up however you want. My workflow is actually very similar to what you're seeing here on the screen, and that is that for any kind of communication that might be multifaceted or threaded with the client, we're gonna use the message board thread. So exactly like this, your new website proof is ready. That would be a real message board thread we'd send to the client, and we'd interact with them in that. Should there be a task that comes out of it, then we're gonna switch back over here to the to-do section, and we're going to add a to-do here. You know, if they said we need to change something on the homepage, we would add a to-do item here and work on that accordingly, where of course we can actually bring in the client here. Typically we're not tagging clients into to-do items that can get a little bit hectic on their side. So a lot of times the to-dos are for us to track progress, but again, if the client wants to come into the project and see where you're at, they really can. All they have to do is just come in here, click an item, and they can see any of the progress in the comments that have been made on that task. And then the final thing that I love is that from an organizational standpoint, Basecamp excels because almost everything you can link to directly inside of the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and respond to this message thread from my client account real quick. Let's say you're super proud of the work, but the client comes to you and they say something typically client like, I didn't get the link even though it's right here. What you could do is in your project, you have this section called docs and files. So we're gonna put all of our client assets in this folder. You could go to this Figma board, you can copy this Basecamp URL, and then you can just say, it's here for you. You paste that in, and then it kind of changes that link to be much more readable. So Figma board inside demo project for Apex Web Solutions. That just looks really nice. Now that's just one small example. So let's go back to a to-do item here. And let's say, you know, we have a bunch of different comments and let's say you need to direct somebody, whether it's your internal team member or a client to a specific portion of a thread, all you have to do is click on the time and then you can see the URL changes. And then when I add this in the notes, it's going to take that person directly to that specific comment. Now, this is as far down as the page goes, but you get the idea. If there's a long threaded conversation, we can link things around inside of the project extremely easily. So it can be to a specific comment, you could also, inside of a to-do list, say, I need you to address all of the items in the footer section. So you could, you know, ping a team member, copy that in, and you could say, you know, please address all items in the footer. And then you can just link that in. You can paste this message in. And then when they get that, whether it's your client or your teammate, then they can just simply click this and it will take them straight to the footer to do item. So I use this all over the place, mainly internally because a lot of times I'm gonna spoon feed the info the client needs right to them in the initial message. But this is a really great way as projects become more and more complicated to link things back and forth. You know how sometimes these things get a little unruly and you have tons of messages and tasks and documents and files. So this is a really great way to keep everything segmented, but not have to duplicate things over and over because you can link around your Basecamp project really easily. If you're interested in learning more about my workflow, what I do, and some other tips and tricks as far as running a web agency, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter, which you can get to at the link in the description of this video. If you have any other specific questions for me, thoughts, comments, concerns about Basecamp, I'd also be very interested to hear those as well. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.